Feminism is the belief that men and women are equal and that the sex differences between the two are either non-existent or minor. The most disturbing aspect of feminism is that at heart it is a conspiracy theory. The theory states that men oppress women and have since the beginning of time, that only feminists can really see this oppression and therefore only they can do anything to stop this historic injustice. Feminism is simply liberalism as it applies to the lives of women. Traditionalists, however, reject every aspect of feminism. We do not believe that men and women are equal. We believe that men and women are vital. They are vital because each sex has different attributes and abilities. Men and women are not interchangeable. They are unique. Each sex encompassing those things needed by the other sex that they themselves do not have. Neither sex is the superior sex because each sex is superior in the things that it is good at and inferior in the things that it is not good at. We also reject the idea that men oppress women. Both sexes suffer and both are rewarded in life simply because they were born a particular sex. It is not one getting all the goodies and the other receives nothing. Life is without any doubt unfair, but that unfairness does not and should not fall only on one sex. Within feminism, there are many divisions, most small and some very large, but from our perspective, it is best to simply divide feminism into two parts, the parts we can see and encounter. I call them hard feminism and soft feminism. Hard feminism is when most people think of feminism. This is the kind of thing that they think of. Women's studies, all men are rapists, political lesbianism. This is the hard and often nasty face of feminism. Here is the reason most women will not call themselves feminist, no matter how close to the feminist ideal they live. Even standard liberals can get incensed at their ideas and antics, but of course they are needed, for without them, who would have the courage to say the really outrageous things? No, liberalism needs them, so they can see who ignores and who salutes the latest idea. Sometimes they say things that can seem acceptable to most people, but in reality, feminists often win because society doesn't want to fight. They never thought of the idea before feminism mentioned it. Society has no idea if it's true or not, but it just wants to get on with life and not get bogged down in an argument it doesn't really know anything about. Just because society doesn't want to fight doesn't mean we should just roll over and give up. Soft feminism is the sort we see nearly every day. The idea that men and women are equal, but women have been discriminated against in the past, so they need extra help today. It's one of those things you mostly accept because either you haven't noticed it yet or because you just have to get through the day. Offices where everyone is female, schools with not a single male teacher, women in traditional male occupations, but no corresponding males in traditional female occupations, no fault divorce, child custody and child support, where men are too often guilty and less proven innocent. When you challenge this, you get some interesting responses. Some get very, very embarrassed as if they've been caught out. Others insist that thinking men and women aren't identical is either hatred of women or old fashioned, as if criticizing something means you must hate it and that new fashion is somehow better, even though we all know fashions come and go. The idea that women can and should do anything a man can do is rife. How can it not be when so many say men and women are equal simply because they have heard the mantra so many times before? The idea that ideas have consequences is an absurdity to these people, and they will tell you so. Women can dress any way they want, they can drink as much as any man, and they can be as sexually irresponsible as any cad, all without consequences, they believe. Which is strange, because these things still have consequences for men. The mistake is to think that consequences are only moral consequences. The consequences for both are a lack of safety, health issues and emotional baggage. Instead of having these problems crop up in life, they seem to be the desired outcome. Hating. Feminism has a well-deserved reputation for hating men. Some feminists dispute this. They say it is the actions of men that they hate, not men themselves. Unfortunately, whether that is true or not, it is the policies that they support that show their true colours. Men are actively discriminated against in favour of not women, but feminist women. 
It is here that the true hatred of feminism is shown. For feminism believes that all true women are feminists, and all who are not must either be converted or ignored. Laws that protect traditional women are dismantled as being pro-male laws. Because of stand of men and women being partners in life together, they must now be enemies in the war between the sexes. The ideal woman is single with a professional career, children optional but not preferred, who is promiscuous and hard living. The ideal woman is a bachelor. Feminism hates women and femininity even more than it hates men and masculinity. When they say that the differences between the sexes don't matter and those that exist should be eliminated, they really mean it. They wish for a world where no one can tell the difference between a man and a woman, where femininity is as dead as masculinity. It is a war against human nature. It is a war against biology. It is a war against human dignity. It is a war against humanity itself. In short, feminism is inhuman. For those of us opposed to feminism, we should always remember this. Not all women are feminists. Not all feminists are women. And here is a trap feminists fall for. We should know better.